And welcome back to Colorado Sports.tv coverage of the 2015 May Day Mayhem Tournament hosted by the Slaughterhouse Derby Girls from Greeley, Colorado and held here in scenic Loveland, Colorado at the Budweiser Event Center. My name is Mark Bradford, also known as Brad Example. And I am Ms. Communication. Hi. We're happy to bring you the final game of the day on track number one. That is the Cheyenne Capitals taking on Durango Roller Girls, the Durango Derailers up from the southwest part of Colorado. We are already lined up for that first jam of the night. Uh, they are ready to bring on the action here on track one. Thank you so much for tuning in all day here on ColoradoSports.tv. We will be back tomorrow and Sunday with all of the action. Remember, folks, Mayday Mayhem, the largest tournament in the world that has a winner at the end. We, we are, uh, oh, sorry. We're just about to start, so when we get a chance, we will let you know who is skating for each of these two teams. They have each already played today. We're in the period of the tournament that is pool play. There are two pools of seven Women's Flat Track Derby Association teams each. They're playing today and tomorrow morning to determine seeding into an elimination bracket that starts tomorrow afternoon. You can catch all of that action on coloradosports.tv. If you're so inclined, there's a donate button there if you want to help those folks defray their costs of bringing this event to you. Also, if you are kind of uh, weird with tournament schedules and not knowing who's going where and uh, want to know the updated scores, if you go to our Mayday Mayhem Facebook Like Em Up page, we have a link to a updating Google document that will up update with scores, and then we'll start to show you as we start to eliminate teams and seed teams into our bracket, uh, that first bracket game starting tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock Mountain Time. After tonight, the action will resume at 8.30 in the morning, Mountain Daylight Time. We hope you are able to join us for that. We would love to have you early on a Saturday morning. We've got everybody kind of sitting around. Let me just go ahead and go through uh, the Durango Derailers roster for you. We've got number 10, Shotgun Shaheen, 1013, Kilicha, 17, uh, May, Cause, May Cause Harm, 18, Wicked Wagner, 24, Kim Jen Illen, 30, Dose of Jose. 31, Mega Bash, 42, Quadis of Pain, 501, Gene Schwartz, 566, Jess Stroyer, 8008 is Brutal B, uh, 85, Tabruc Tuberculosis, 911, Ike Roomba, and uh, 939, Bad Check Bohati. We're about to get underway. I will tell you who's skating for the Cheyenne Capitals when I get a chance. First jam is in play. We want to remind you guys that uh, as broadcast announcers, we face the jammer line. We will get you the jammers as soon as we see them ourselves. And we see that the first jammer for Durango is number 1013, Kill Icha. Number 27, Her Majesty, has the star for Cheyenne. A lot of fighting off of this straight of way, forcing a kill to the outside. She's back in the back of the pack, trying to find her way up to the top and lead jammer for the first jam of our last game of the day here goes to the derailers. Her Majesty has removed the jammer cap, trying to hand it to the pivot. Vivian lay him out. She does so, but Vivian trips over number 10 shotgun Shaheen for Durango. Shaheen will go to the box for a low block penalty, 30 seconds long. Her Majesty actually wound up hanging on to the Jammer Star, breaking out. It is four and out in favor of Durango. It's 4-0, 28-55 on that period clock. Cheyenne coming in, they are the number three team in pool number one, Durango the number four team, and their current rankings in the Women's Slide Track Derby Association, number 153 for Cheyenne, 162 for Durango, we can expect a pretty close game. Official timeout is called, stopping the clock at 28 minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the first period. 
Uh, that official timeout being called likely because I just got a last minute uh, substitution in for the derailers. Number 1080, Mada Stucka is, uh, has been rostered instead of number 17 may cause harm. Thank you for that information. We're geared up for the next jam. Play action. Oh, rough takeout in the center of the track. Pushing at the front of the pack, the Durango jammer is number 566, Destroyer. Number 311, Roll Pounce with the star for Cheyenne. And it's Roll Pounce who makes it out first. In fact, in a power jam as Destroyer going to the penalty box on a track cut. Capital's in charge of that jam clock. We've got one blocker down for Cheyenne in the pack. Roll Pounce getting knocked to the infield. We've got a multiple player block being assessed on 24, Kim Jen Illen. She'll go sit for 30 seconds. Roll Pounce now still fighting her way through the pack on her first scoring pass. She does make it through. Five points for, the, for Cheyenne. And with a correction on the scoreboard to our first jam, resulting in a five point score on the board for Durango, that means we have a tie game for the next few seconds. That power play has ended as Roll Pounce does pick up another four points through the pack. Destroyer back in the fray, fighting on the outside. She runs right into the Capitals wall and Roll Pounce through on the inside with another four points. I believe that Destroyer is still on her initial pass. No signal from the referee to indicate that she is eligible to score. So this is an opportunity for the Cheyenne Capitals to put a little daylight between themselves and their opponents. Roll Pounce through on the inside line. This time it's a five-point pass. Rockscar and KY holding down Destroyer in the pack. She fights up to the top. She's only got Scarella DeVille to beat up at the top, but Scarella is sitting on her right now. <laughs> we have only one second remaining, no seconds remaining now in the jam. Called off on time. Two final points collected by Roll Pounce. 20 points total for Roll Pounce. Five of those power points when Destroyer went to the penalty box. That full two-minute jam knocking the period clock down to 26 minutes and change. A final point seems to have been awarded to Cheyenne as they stand at 21 on the scoreboard. Jam is in play and up the inside. That's number 939, Bad Check Bohati. She is lead jammer, but jamming for the Capitals. We've got number 151, MC Slamma, through and clear to score in hot pursuit. Called off with no points. Cheyenne doing a great job of playing keep away, uh, leaving the Durango line at the back of the pack. Uh, there wasn't enough time for uh, Badcheck to get through her line and, uh, and risk MC Slamma picking up points on her. Neither of these teams has played a sanctioned game this year before this weekend. So whatever record they come out with from Mayday Mayhem will be their record for the year. Durango has never played any of the teams that are also here at the tournament. So uncharted territory. We've got number 10, 13, Kilicha for Durango out in front. She is lead jammer. Her lead jammer percentage is presently 100%. 2-4-2. Two two. Now clear to score for the Capitals. We have number 35, Bomb Dylan. Bomb Dylan out and ready to score, but Kilicha picks up four points and calls off the jam. Score now nine to 21, 24 minutes left in the first half. This is not dissimilar to the game that was just on track two earlier today where the Winnipeg team was able to build up a bit of a lead, but then Duke City chipped away at it until they would actually get out in front and then Winnipeg would drop some big jams. So we'll see if a history repeats itself on this track. Play action number triple three, Miss Enigma, through and lead for the Capitals. Number 566, Destroyer, jamming again for 
Durango with a little more success this time. Threw it and cleared a score. Missy hitting the pack. We got a trap cut being called on a Durango blocker. Missy trying to fight her way through. And she picks up three points before calling off the jam. Destroyer unable to catch the pack in time to pick up any for Durango. Score now 24 to 9, 23 minutes left in the first half. I think that's number 31 Mega Bash in the box for Durango. Oh, thank you, sir. So 15 point lead for the team from Cheyenne. Cheyenne with a slightly higher Women's Flat Track Derby Association, ra uh, Association ranking just at the moment. The outcome of these sanctioned games this weekend will affect that ranking. Number 27, Her Majesty threw and lead jammer for Cheyenne. She is jamming against number 10, 13, Kilicha, who is right on her heels. It's almost a couple skate out there, Brad. Kilicha coming back to the track after only one jam away. Capitals losing two blockers, one of them, a number 222, Karen Yurasup, or KY. Uh, three points. Three points apiece, so that was a tie jam. Durango able to sneak in and steal some points off of Her Majesty's lead jammer status. Score now 27 to 12, 22 minutes left in the first half. Differential staying at 15 points. Three on three in the pack, but Durango's blocker poised to re-enter. She does so safely behind the pack as she's supposed to. A forearm block called on number 24 for Durango. That's Kim Jen Illen. That's 939 out in front. Bad check, Bahati. She is a lead. Hot in pursuit, though. We've got number 311, Roll Pounds. Roll Pounds with that very successful 21 point jam in the second jam of the game. Since then, it has been kept to single digits. Jam called off now with three collected by Durango. Three collected by Durango. Durango very slowly, as you said, chipping away. We're, we're having all these little mini jams. We've only got 21 minutes left on the, we've got 21 minutes left in the period, but we've already done seven jams. This will be our eighth. Crazy short jams, a, a lot of uh, jammers breaking out and putting on the pressure. The only time, actually, that a jammer was unable to successfully get out of the pack on the first pass uh, was Destroyer in the second uh, jam that Roll Pounce had, the 21-point jam. So we've got an official timeout stopping the clock at 21 minutes and 3 seconds. Now, by our very unofficial count, we saw a three-point pass in the last jam. That doesn't seem to be reflected on the scoreboard, but the scoreboard rules, and so whatever it says there is official. Yeah, scoreboard rules, man. <laughs> <laughs> MC Slamma, the jammer of record for the Capitals. Uh, looks like uh, Bad Check Bahati sent to the penalty box at the end of the last jam, so this is a power jam for the Capitals. MC Slamma going to capitalize with that five point pass. Four on one right now in the pack as number 24, Kim Jen Illen, does come in to rejoin her teammate on the track. Slamma through, and she picks up another, uh, she picks up five points as Bad Check Bahati back in from the penalty box. Power play has ended for the ladies in orange. Whistles at the far end of the track. A multiplayer block called on one of the Cheyenne blockers. That, that would be Bomb Dylan, number 35. Bad Check Bahati through, but MC Slamma penalized herself. It's a power jam for Bad Check Bahati. With MC Slamma to the box, that means she loses her lead jammer status. We will go the remainder of this, uh, the remaining 53 seconds of this jam. Bad check up Bahati picking up five points on this power play for Durango. She goes to the outside line, able to keep her skates in bounds and completes the scoring pass, collecting all five. 10 points thus far with MC Slamma on her feet, meaning she has less than 10 seconds left on her penalty. Bomb Dylan exploding back into the pack to join her wall of oranges. MC Slamma 
back in from the penalty box. She was on a scoring pass when she went to the box, so we do expect points to go up as soon as she completes this pass. Briefly, we had five on five on the track, but then it uh, looked like a back block assess to Bomb Dylan from the Cheyenne pack. MC Slamma completing a four-point pass, a five-point pass for Badcheck Bohati. Bomb Dylan really needing to manage her penalties right now as she also is a jammer. Uh, you get into a lot of danger with that penalty management as a jammer. Two more points for MC Slamma as the jam comes to its natural conclusion. 16-15 is how that shook out. 43-27 is the score with Cheyenne on top. So Cheyenne able to hang on here. They have the, it's about evenly split actually on uh, the lead jammer call so far. But Cheyenne bumps up the, oh, there's a correction. Three points have been added for Durango. I wonder if those th were the three points we were missing from earlier. That probably was, Brad. That's what I'm guessing, is I didn't see that go up in a pass. Right now, your jammer of record and lead jammer is number 566, Jess Stroyer from Durango. Jammer for... Jammer for the Capitals is number 123, hooked on Onyx. She headed to the penalty box on a multiple player block as Destroyer completes her first scoring pass. Five points on the board for the ladies from the Desert Southwest. So the power play continuing as Destroyer comes around. Only two blockers currently on the track for both teams for that matter. And so we got a full house in the pokey. <laughs> Destroyer, however, in control of the jam. Just now we see Hooked on Onyx returning to the track. 10 total power points for Durango on that power jam. And another five points up on the board as Durango takes the lead in this game. Hooked on Onyx through and clear to score. That's going to reduce the damage that Destroyer can do. Durango doing a great job of the, of the uh, pause then speed up action in the pack trying to play a little keep away uh, from Hooked on Onyx. Uh, no further points for Destroyer. Team timeout being called for the Capitals. Probably to say, um, they just got 15 points in that last jam, ladies. It's 45-43 right now. Durango on top, under 17 minutes left in our first half. Capitals this weekend being guest coached by Coach Derte of uh, Denver uh, ground, Denver's men's ground control team. You'll see him uh, skate tomorrow as well here at Mayhem. There are three men's teams skating in a round robin tomorrow at Mayhem. You went to Madness out from, well, it's a combination of uh, Utah and Idaho, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, they merged from, just at the beginning of the year. From San Diego, we've got the Aftershocks and then ground control up from Denver, just down I-25 here from Loveland. Almost directly. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Just about. Not that I know where they practiced and not that they, that sounds <laughs> creepy or anything. Yeah, as well. <laughs> I know where you practice, boys. Score again, 45-43, clock frozen just under 17 minutes, and we are only on jam nine in this game. Some of those jams have really stretched out here. We've had more than one two-minute jam. On the line in orange, that's number 27, Her Majesty. She is skating against number 10, 13, Kill Icha. Both jammers exit the pack seemingly simultaneously. Her Majesty's hips, the first one out, so she is lead jammer. But Kilicha up in front, forcing the call off, 0-0 in that jam. So far, six skaters have worn the star for Cheyenne, only three for Durango, sticking with a three jammer rotation. Score, of course, remaining unchanged. The only thing that changes is the clock, 16-16, and ticking down here in the first half of the last game of the first day of the three-day tournament of the fifth annual. Two-point lead mayhem. for Durango, hardly worth mentioning unless it may stays that way at the end of the game. <laughs> And with these teams as closely ranked as they are, it certainly is going to be to the advantage of whichever team wins in terms of the rankings. Number 311, Roll Bounce, with the star for Cheyenne. First one through, Lee Jammer. We've got number 18, first time Wicked Wagner is jamming for Durango. 
Wagner looking for it up at the top of the pack. She gets a nudge out of bounds by Hannah Smash Tana. Hannah Smash Tana having an amazing game earlier today as well against West Texas. And Smash Tana forces the cut. Wicked Nick Wagner is going to go to the box for 30 seconds. Meanwhile, five points in the air for Roll Pounce, and Cheyenne does have a power jam. Roll Pounce had already picked up five on her pass when Wicked Wagner went to the box and the lead has flopped back to the Cheyenne side of the scoreboard. We've got another five points up in the air. Power points, of course, for Roll Pounce. Durango going to lose one of their blockers to the penalty box. Pack is hovering between turns two and three. And at the front of the pack, Roll Pounce calls it, picking up three on the pass, but extending the power play into the next jam. Correct, 13-point jam for Durango. We've got our second lead change of the game, 56-45. Capitals on top, 14 minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the first half. I see MC Slamma taking the jammer star for Cheyenne, unopposed on the jammer line. Again, that's Wicked Wagner. She is standing on her feet in the penalty box. Less than 10 seconds left on her penalty. MC Slamma finds a way through lead jammer just as Wicked Wagner re-enters from the box. So the power play was short live, but did suffice to get them lead. Wicked Wagner out of the pack now. That's going to limit the damage that MC Slamma can do on this jam. She wants all four points, though, and she gets them. Ladies in orange losing Rockscar and an additional blocker to the box. Wicked Wagner being knocked to the infield by KY. That was slick. MC Slamma does not call it, trusting her blockers to contain Wicked Wagner, and so far that trust justified. Five more points for MC Slamma. Wicked Wagner contained. Now she gets out for four of her own. Number 1080, Mother Stucca headed to the penalty box for Durango as MC Slamma is through again, four points. Still does not call it, and this time Wicked Wagner quickly threw for four points. MC Slamma again through with another four points on the board. She goes ahead and calls it. 17 to eight in that last jam. Score now 73-53 with 13 minutes remaining. Actually, Brad, example, earlier today uh, when I watched Cheyenne play, uh, they did a lot of keeping the jam running when they were lead jammer. Uh, most partially to, wear, to run out time, but also playing kind of to their advantage uh, that uh, th at that time, they were the home team playing against Flatlanders, uh, so they were used to the altitude. Of course, Durango, relatively the same altitude as Loveland, so this team won't have the same struggles that West Texas did earlier. Never the, uh, despite the uh, extended strategy, it, it definitely worked for Cheyenne as they've extended their lead to 20 points, the largest lead of the game so far. They gave their star to Miss Enigma, number triple three, through for lead. For the first time, Ika Rumba has the star, number 911 for Durango. She's pushed into the outfield, recycles back. This is Colorado. We like to recycle here. Well, we do, and especially in Durango, the granola is very crunchy there. Five more points on the board for Missy. Ika Rumba deciding to hand off her star to number 566, Destroyer. I wondered when I saw Destroyer in the pack. Destroyer now with the star in her hand, restarting at the back of the pack. Missy picking up another five points, 10 points total for Missy Enigma and the Capitals on this jam. Over a minute gone in this possibly two minute jam. Destroyer now taking a penalty and headed to the box with the star in hand. She is sitting as a blocker. There seems to have been an issue with the star pass. Now on a power play, five points by Miss Enigma. We see on the outside, trying to get crowded through by 939, Bad Check Bahati, but she picks up a track cut. So we're going to trade. Let's see. We will have our original jammer of record, Ike Karamba, pick up the star pass. Uh, or to pick up the star, uh, basically uh, 
The destroyer failing to drop the helmet cover before heading to the penalty box, so she tossed it onto the track yeah, for Jess to, to pick it up. She had to bring it back on, and so no points accrued by Durango during the course of the jam. A little bit of referee discussion in the center. Probably verifying that the, uh, that, that call on the star pass. Coach Durte out in the center. We've got an official review being called. Uh, for those of you watching from home who might be new to roller derby, a uh, single official review given to each team, each period, so one each period. Uh, when they have the official review, if it is awarded, then they get to, to, uh, to retain that official review. If it is not, then they lose their official review. Uh, in this case, until uh, 10 minutes and 22 seconds have expired and they will get a new one for the second half. Although the uh, get your review back thing only works once. Yes, it doesn't work. <laughs> and recent, it's not like wishing for more wishes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and recently the Women's Flat Track Derby Association clarified their rules to indicate that yes, you may Use that official review as effectively a fourth time out if that is to your advantage. Previously, we've seen some pretty creative reasons for official reviews used by coaches in order to uh, practically make the, the case. And so the WFTDA said, oh, let's just make that official. So a uh, track cut on Miss Enigma is likely why Coach Durte is out in the center, uh, hoping to spring Missy from the pokey, as my friend Brad Example likes to call it. <laughs> or the Hooskow. Or the Husqvarna. We are in Colorado. We we are, and uh, I mean, you you got Cheyenne playing Durango. I there mean, there's go. the Wild West right there in front of you. There you go. <laughs> Clock stopped with 10 minutes and 22 seconds. A quick reminder: we are at the fifth annual May Day Mayhem Tournament, hosted by the Slaughterhouse Der Derby Girls out of Greeley, Colorado. You are watching us on ColoradoSports.tv. They've got a donate button up on their page. If you are feeling generous, and would like to help defray their costs, they would very much appreciate that. We are in the last game of today. We'll be back at 8.30 in the morning, Mountain Time, for, uh, again, two tracks of action. We're still in pool play. We'll be seeing the number fives versus the number sevens from each pool, which includes the Happy Valley Derby Dolls playing the Muddy River Rollers and the Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls against the Assault Creek Roller Girls out of Casper, Wyoming. When that is all said and done, we'll be going into bracket play starting in the afternoon. Official review was overturned. Uh, so uh, whatever Sh Cheyenne, I'm assuming, with that track cut penalty had, had likely challenged the track cut penalty. And that stands right now, 1013 Kilicha. Uh, just garnering Lee Jammer status as Missy comes back in from the penalty box. Since Missy Nigma made it back onto the track before Kill Icha got in there, it's not precisely a power play. And Missy e on her way through, four points collected by Kill Icha. She calls it off, chipping four points off that lead, 31 point lead for Cheyenne, 88 to 57. You know, uh, actually, us folks from Durango were used to nickel and diming it in a resort community. <laughs> so uh, this is totally playing to uh, being from a tourist town where many people work in the service industry. <laughs> yeah. A few big jams in the, the last five minutes or 10 minutes for. Uh, Cheyenne is what put them up by 30-some points. 9.15 ticking down on the clock. We've got a multiple player block being called on number 210, Bangaray Fay as number 27, Her Majesty, jammer of record and lead jammer for the Capitals. Number 24, Kim Jen Illen has the star for the first time for Durango. Narrowly avoiding a track cutting penalty as uh, Bisco Fever drags her back. But we will have a little bit of a curtsy there. Five points for Her Majesty as Kim Janillen out and ready to score points. Her Majesty looking to grab a couple more before calling it off. She gets through the line, calls it off. That should be all four. And it is. Nine nothing in that last jam. We'll wait for that scoreboard to update. 825 left in the first half. Cheyenne at 97, Durango at 57. 40 points separating these two teams. 
So on paper, you would expect Cheyenne to be leading by a bit since they have there are nine ranking spots higher in the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. Those rankings are determined numerically these days. However, Cheyenne outperforming a little bit with that 40-point lead. We'll see if Durango is able to take it back. Roll Pounce has the star for Cheyenne, number 939. Bad Check, Bad Check Bohati has the star for Durango. She's the first one through. Check makes it through. Roll Pounce out and ready to score. Capitals losing KY, number 222, to the penalty box. Tripping up the inside line, push to the infield. Bad Check Bohati calling it off, collecting three points. So nickels, dimes, pennies, thruppenies. It's three pence, yeah? Yep. We, we have some Brits in the house. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> 97 to 60 on the board, just over seven minutes. You've got Vivian Lamb out with that pivot cover directly facing the camera right now, meaning with her back. <laughs> We've got number 1013, Kilicha, on the line for Durango. She is jamming against MC Slamma, who is now your lead jammer. Kilicha has two to beat up front. The aforementioned Vivian Layam out and number seven, Hannah Smashtana. Kilicha out and ready to score. MC Slamma, though, already completing her first scoring pass. Four points for the ladies in orange, and she calls off the jam. Cheyenne now breaking the century mark. 101 to Durango, 60. 623 remaining in this half. Earlier today, over on track two, we saw an impressive comeback in the second period by the Pueblo Derby Devil Dolls. They weren't able to take the lead in their game uh, against, um, sorry, I'm drawing a blank at the moment, but they were able to uh, bring it back and, and won that second period. So even though there's a 40-point gap right now, that is no reason to count Durango out. Oklahoma City. Yes, OKC, that is correct. On the line, we've got number 333, three, three, Miss Enigma, who is lead jammer. Number 911, Ika Rumba, with the score, the star for the Durango Roller Girls, Durango Derailers. And Ika Rumba out and ready to score. She'll be joined by her pivot, number 566, six, Just Troyer. Miss Enigma through, picks up her four points, and calls off the jam. So that's two successive 4 nothing jams in favor of the Capitals. Taking them to 105 points to Durango's 60. Capitals executing very well here. Over the course of the first period, they've picked up lead 61% of the time. Up for Cheyenne is hooked on Onyx. Yeah. It's number 123 hooked on Onyx on the line for the Capitals. And for Durango, out in front, that's a 9-3-9, bad check Bahati. This is Czech's fifth turn with the star. This lead call gives her an 80% lead percentage. Hooked on Onyx out there, actually handing the star off to her pivot, Vivian Layam out. Vivian out, has the star on her head, but bad check Bahati says, eh, I'll just pick up four points and call off the jam. Hopefully, they won't charge me any late fees later. <laughs> 64 to 105, 417 left in the half, and we've got a team timeout being called for Durango. We're going to stop the clock with four minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the first period. That's the first timeout they are calling. They have three altogether. They stopped the clock for 60 seconds, can only be called between jams. I mentioned that we have three men's roller derby association teams who are going to play in round robin tomorrow at the tournament. Then come Sunday, we've got four teams from the Junior Roller Derby Association. They'll be playing two bouts total, Slaughterhouse Derby Girls versus the Denver Roller Dolls. Uh, Major Turbulence is the, the new name of their team. And then the FOCO Girls Gone Derby Juniors against the Rocky Mountain Roller Punks. All of those teams from right here in Colorado. Four Collins are still the Spartans, right? I think so, the Spartan Babes. Yes. And Slaughterhouse Derby Girls, it's uh, the Butcher, Butcher Babes. Butcher Babes, yeah. yes, going with the whole prime cuts. Yep. 
There's a theme. Slaughterhouse here. theme. I don't know why there would be a theme. That is uh, something, something, kill floor, something, <laughs> something, something. Right now, it's clock being brought back here at 4.15 for the first half, 105.64. Both teams have used one of their allowable three team timeouts for the game. Action back on the track. Her Majesty, number 27, on the line for the Capitals and fighting for control of the inside. That's number 1013, Kilicha. Her Majesty at the top of the pack. First one out lead for the Cheyenne Capitals. And it's compounded by the fact that Kilicha has taken a blocking out of bounds penalty and will sit for 30 seconds. That's a fairly rare penalty these days. Yes, we, we've actually seen it a few times here today. I've, I've written it down and gone, oh. I haven't, I haven't written that in a while. Five points, though, for Her Majesty. Uh, those being power points as Kilicha is caged in the box. Her Majesty able to keep her skates in bounds to collect a second Grand Slam pass. That swing and a miss by Shotgun Shaheen is a lot of the reason why we're getting some blocking out of bounds. Uh, skaters following other skaters out of bounds, continuing to push them with their hips after they are out of play. Five points in the air for Cheyenne. That As condition might be slightly uh, compounded by the very slick polished concrete floor here at the Budweiser Event Center. Could very well be. Maybe it's blocking out of bounds this year. Last year it was uh, low blocking. Ah. Her Majesty in the pack. Kill each it coming around. Before Kill each it gets in for points, three final points collected by Her Majesty who calls it. 18-0 in that last jam brings Cheyenne's score to 123, Durango 64, two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this half. We've got a whole another half of Derby to be played. It certainly goes without saying that someone's going to post a cliche on my wall here in a second. <laughs> uh, we can certainly see Durango uh, has enough time, even at four points a jam, but they certainly need to get their jammer penalties under control. Roll pounce number 311 for Cheyenne out in front and lead, but Bad Check Bahati putting on the pressure. She is directly behind her. Roll Pounce able to put just a few feet between herself and Check, but Check is in hot pursuit and bringing it right back around. Oh, bad Check Bahati with a hip check off of turn one. She heads into the fray in the pack. She gets knocked to the outfield. The Durango blockers were towards the rear of the pack, giving the, the scoring up advantage to Roll Pounce, but bad Check Bahati was not going to let that slip by easily. She is passing Cheyenne blockers and picking up points. So it's called off now. How do the points fall out? Actually an advantage to Durango. Three to two on the jam. You got to be careful with those bad checks. <laughs> do they roll bounce? <laughs> oh, well, you know, instead of roll pouncing, yes. Exactly. 125.67, a minute 15 left in the first half. Still five seconds before the, the whistle. They reformed very quickly on the line there. I think I recognize Kill Icha with a star for Durango. I'll go to verbal check, but it does look like her. Yes, it is, and that's MC Slamma jamming for Cheyenne. She's trying on the outside, but Kill Icha picking up lead jammer status. Slamma, though, going for the pass. Both of them playing a little tag on the track right now. The Cheyenne blockers towards the rear. That gives the advantage to Kill Icha, who has lead. But MC Slamma passed at least one of the Durango blockers. Called off with a score of 3-1 to one advantage Durango. MC Slamma able to, to uh, steal one point. 3-2, to two, actually. Oh, two points. Correction on the fingers held up by the jam ref. And still... Well, unless somebody calls timeout, they will not run another jam. 3-2 in that last jam, 70 to 127, and we've got an official review being called by Durango. They are likely, you know, using that single official review because, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. And why not? That gives them another chance. They, the last two jams have both been 3-2 to two jams with the advantage going to Durango, so maybe they just want to keep... Chipping away, point by point. 
Durango, I, Durango basically wanting us to have a one final jam before we head into halftime. And we just heard that the official review request was, please check the, the score. So that's Yes, yes, we, we do need to check the score. That's very important to verify our score, ensure that everybody is writing everything down. So the highest lead of the game so far was a couple jams ago when Her Majesty had an 18-point jam, creating a 59-point lead for the Capitol. Since then, two points have been chipped off by Durango. So we will run one more jam. Three seconds on the period clock. 127 to 70. That period clock is going to expire pretty quickly, and we're now on free derby time. Jam time. Jam clock controlling it, and our last jammer for Durango in this half is number 939, Bad Check Bohati. Number triple three, Miss Enigma with the star through the pack and clear to score for the Capitals, but Bad Check Bohati already into the pack and scoring points. Patrick Bohati finds herself at the top of the pack, calls it off 2-0 in that last jam in Durango's advantage. So that takes us into halftime. We got 10 minutes on the halftime clock. Score is 127 for the Cheyenne Capitals, 72 for the Durango Derailers. Ms. Communication, what have you seen in this first period? You know, uh, well, what I've seen has, and what has been the story is, is Cheyenne capitalizing uh, on, not only on power jams, but also on taking that chance, running the jam clock while you are lead jammer, trusting that your blockers will keep the other team's jammer at bay for you. And it has paid off for them, certainly. Score headed into halftime, 127-72. Certainly not insurmountable, and we would have plenty of time for Durango to eke away at it four points at a time, but it, that would be a grueling process uh, indeed. Well, it's the, the, that trust in the blockers has been justified as, in, in terms of double-digit jams, Cheyenne definitely has the advantage. They've had one, two, three, four, five, six of those against only two jams for Durango that have been 15 points apiece. And so we are in that realm. If, if Durango's going to make it back, they're going to have to keep... Uh, Cheyenne from racking up those double digit jams. Well we're going to go ahead and take a break here for halftime. We will be back at about two minutes till Derby uh, to do a little recap and head into the second half. Uh, once again thank you for tuning in to 2015 Mayday Mayhem coverage here on ColoradoSports.tv During halftime you can certainly click on that donate button and float us a few dollars and uh, heading out into halftime my name is still Miss Communication. And mine is still Mark Bradford also known as Brad Example. AKA. <laughs> AKA. See you in a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ColoradoSports.tv coverage of the 2015 May Day Mayhem Tournament, hosted by the Slaughterhouse Derby Girls for all five of its years. They're from Greeley, Colorado, but we're in Loveland, Colorado at the Budweiser Event Center. My name is Mark Bradford, also known as Brad Example. And I am Ms. Communication. And I just want to say a special hi to my friend Betty Booya, <laughs> watching tonight and uh, laughing at me in secret until I get a chance to read my notes at halftime. Thanks, Betty. <laughs> I love you. Yes, well, that's, that's the thing about <laughs> today's modern, instantly connected world. You get to know what your friends are thinking about you, no matter where they are and no matter where you are. Yes, friends, uh, making us self-conscious... So much quicker in this day and age. So we are back. Score right now, 127.72. Cheyenne on top. Uh, Cheyenne currently seated third in pool number one. And uh, Durango seated fourth in pool number one. We have seen some close play, but uh, a couple of runaway jams by the Cheyenne Capitals is, is what uh, has thrown the score over the marker like this. Cheyenne actually has three jammers with over 30 points apiece. MC Slamma with 39, Roll Pounce with 36, and Her Majesty with 30. On the other side of the equation, Bad Check Bohati for Durango has 30 points, but uh, the other jammers are... Kill Icha with 19, Destroyer with 5, and Wicked Wagner has only jammed a couple times and earned 8 points while doing so. The lead calls are 
fairly evenly split, actually. Cheyenne has 57% of them, uh, Durango 43. That's not a huge differential, but Cheyenne has definitely been more effective at turning those lead calls into points. We've got 12 seconds ticking down on the time to Derby clock. Thank you so much, by the way, for tuning in to us here on ColoradoSports.tv. We were going to paywall this year. And then we decided not to because we love our fans and we love making Derby free for you. However, if you want to give a little something back for our free coverage this weekend, we do ask that you click on that Donate Now button and float us a few dollars. I suggest $5 a day as a reasonable donation. We also, I believe, have the opportunity to purchase DVDs of this weekend's game, so stay tuned for that. That we are back in action. Number 27, Her Majesty for Cheyenne is the first jammer through lead jammer. Number 939, Bad Check Bohati with the star for Durango. Durango and Cheyenne both losing one to the penalty box. Check out and ready to score Her Majesty with four points. And she's going to keep the clock running. Is she waiting for a few seconds to call it off? She does, and she waits too long. Four points on a hop through on the inside line. Poor uh, gamble in that situation with only two blockers on the track for Cheyenne. All that Bad Check Bahacha needed to do to get those two points sitting in the box was to pass the, the uh, furthest back blocker. She, of course, passed both, got the full four points. That's a wash. We're just going to bump the score up, 131-76. 28-58 left in the game. I see number 311 roll pounce with the star for Cheyenne. Taking on number 10, 13, Kill Icha. Roll pounce cuts the track. It's a power jam for Kill Icha, who capitalizes by earning lead. Kill Icha and Durango in control right now. It's two on two right now in the pack, but we've got two pivots actually on their feet and one additional blocker from Durango heading in as well to join her teammate. Penalty box starting to empty out now as only roll pounce remains seated. Kilicha with five points, capitalizing on that power play, though. Uh, roll pounce on her feet now in the box, less than 10 seconds left on her penalty. Kilicha able to put up another five points as roll pounce back in and skating around the track. She is about 50, 60 feet behind the track and fast closing in. Kilicha still letting the clock run. Roll pounce out and ready to score. That was just a roll pounce's initial pass, though. Kilicha calling it off with three final points for Durango. Total of 13 on the jam by my unofficial count, but fortunately that matches the scoreboard. 89 on the board for Durango. 131 for Cheyenne. And if maybe you're listening to us from Canada... Uh, let me just help you with that donation. Uh, $5 American is $10 Canadian. <laughs> Let's That's see. That's the uh, official hmm. miscommunication is that that new math? currency rate. Okay. Miscommunication currency rate, yes. Because you have two Canadian teams competing this weekend. MC Slam at number 151 has the star for Cheyenne. She's the first one through and the lead. Number 566, Destro Destroyer, has the star and is clear to score four Durango, but full, uh, nearly a full half lap behind. MC Slam uh, opts not to call it off and in fact cuts the track, doesn't have the option of calling it off. So we are going to have no lead. We will go to the uh, natural conclusion of the jam and we are on power points time right now. Five points for Destroyer. Destroyer with a uh, high-scoring 15-point jam in the last half with a, on a power play as well. That's true, tying one from uh, Bad Check Bohati in the, the jam right before it. Five additional points on the board for Destroyer. Another Durango blocker in. That's number 85, tubru tuberculosis. You move. Sorry about that. MC Slamma, though, back in. Power Jam has ended for Durango. We are going to go the remaining 47 seconds. That was a big takeout by number 210, Bangarang Fay. Four points for Slamma on her scoring pass. Destroyer having a hard time on the inside line. Batchek Bohati penalized. I think it was a clockwise block. 
Slamma fighting at the back of the pack. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> nice move around the inside, getting her through the pack. Four points for Cheyenne. Destroyer still hung up in the pack. She's trying on the inside line, gets past Hannah Smash Tana for four of her own. No, it's five. Presently, score on the jam is 15 to 10, 15 to 8. We've got another four points for MC Slamma. So a total of 12 on the jam for Cheyenne, 15 for Durango. Still a three point victory for Durango, chipping the lead down to 39 points with 25 minutes of play remaining. Couple of blockers in the box for Durango. One of whom is standing and will be rejoining shortly. Yeah, tuberculosis actually pulled out of the penalty box and told to return to the track. Kill Icha, lead jammer for Durango. Miss Enigma with the star for Cheyenne makes it out. Kill Icha on the inside. Nice hop, skip, and a jump. Collecting four points. Picks up four points as Cheyenne loses their pivot. Number 35, Bomb Dylan to the penalty box. So that only chipped about a minute off the period clock, 24 and change. Time always moves slower when you're nickeling and diming. Sure seems to. <laughs> but they are successfully nickeling and diming. They've chipped 20 points off of Cheyenne's lead since the start of this period. That uh, penalty box advantage that they picked up in those last two jams, certainly helping Durango out. That's number 18, Wicked Wagner for Durango. But number 27, Her Majesty grabbing lead for Cheyenne. Durango losing their pivot, number 24, Kim Jen Illen, to the penalty box. This is only the third time with the star for Wicked Wagner. Having a little trouble with Cheyenne's pack. Five points collected by Her Majesty. Wicked Wagner being forced to the inside by number 210, Bangarang Faye. Her Majesty scoring again. Pack really spread out along the far side of the track there. Her Majesty threw on the out of play call another Grand Slam. Kim Janillen back in from the penalty box. Wicked Wagner still on in her initial pass and she completes that, ready to score. Her Majesty though out, a third scoring pass, netting four points for the Capitals. 157, 108 now with 22 minutes left in the game. Score differential back up to 49 points, advantageous to the Cheyenne Capitals. Durango derailers. Looked like they were on a surge. Still having chipped off six points since the start of the period, but a long way to go. Definitely. Uh, the Capitals' uh, first WFTDA charter team in Wyoming. Uh, they were founded all the way back in 2010 when Flamabel of the Slaughterhouse Derby Girls decided that the drive was too long from Cheyenne. <laughs> so she founded a league in Cheyenne. We've got number 311, Roll Pounce, on the line for the ladies in orange. And that is number 566, Destroyer, for the Capitals, uh, for Durango. Roll Pounce for the Capitals is the first one through, lead jammer. First one through is almost always lead jammer unless she has what we call a no pass, no penalty and doesn't get credit for passing that last blocker. That would be one of the ways, yes. Destroyer out, ready to score points. Durango losing, Brutal B to the box as RP picks up four points. She doesn't call it. That's giving Destroyer the chance to pick up four of her own. Once again, the Capitals are running the clock when they are in control of it. At this point, that's to their advantage. This time she does call it off after completing a four-point pass. At zero further points for Durango, so a net of four in Cheyenne's favor. 165 to 113 with just under 21 minutes to go. Penalty box not quite empty. We see one... 
Durango blockers standing, meaning fewer than 10 seconds remaining on the penalty. Kill each you back on the line for Durango. She has been working hard out there. This is her 11th jam of the game. That's more than any other jammer. And that's number one, two, three, hooked on Onyx. She gets out first and is lead. That's her first lead call of the game. She's one for three. Bisco Fever out to the box for the Capitals as Kilicha also ready to score. And it looks like a back block penalty being assessed to Onyx. This jam will go the remaining remaining minute and 30 seconds and Kilicha picking up five points. Well, if you're going to be skating for the next minute and change anyway, might as well make the most of it. Kilicha is doing just that, looking for a path through the three blockers currently on the track, but she's bumped into the outfield of turn number one. Onyx actually, in her other two jams this game, uh, went out to the penalty box on a multiplayer block, and that is what allowed number 566, Jess Stroyer, to pick up 15 points. And then uh, in, in a later jam, she handed off the star to Vivian Lamb out. Another five for Kilicha. Onyx back out of the penalty box comes into the pack hot. I'm actually a little bit surprised she didn't pick up a back block on that pack entry. She must not have had an impact on the skater she uh, contacted. Brutal B out for Durango with a forearm penalty. She'll be joined by another blocker. Kill each a recycle to the back of the pack. Four points collected by Hooked on Onyx. Neither jammer able to call off the jam. Kilicha collecting four on her pass. 14 to four right now, 13 seconds left on that jam clock. Onyx forced to recycle, because that's what folks will do in Durango is force you to recycle. Still a few seconds on there. It appears to me that Kilicha got some points. We'll see how many here, just one, three collected by Hooked on Onyx. Score 15 to 7 in Durango's favor. 128, 172. We've got 18, 22 left in the game. So 44 points to make up for Durango. Still keeping a steady stream of skaters into the penalty box. One Durango blocker sitting there right now. MC Slamma through and lead for the Cheyenne Capitals. Ika Rumba, number 911, has the star for Durango. Ika Rumba out and ready to score. Four points for MC Slamma. Cheyenne decides not to run the clock in this case. Calls off the jam. Taking the period clock down to 17 and a half. Cheyenne trying to build their lead back up to where it was. Whereas Durango would like to see that lead go away. Durango has played four of the 2015 teams here at Mayday Mayhem. We've got a team timeout being called by them, <laughs> surprisingly enough. Um, <laughs> Their present record against those, so those four teams are uh, Pueblo, Duke City, of course, because Albuquerque is down the road, Happy Valley, and uh, Foco Girls Gone Derby. Uh, they, they are two and two against those four teams with wins against Pueblo and Happy Valley. Uh, all of those games were unsanctioned, though, when Durango matched up with those teams. So in sanctioned play, well, actually, this this weekend is the first sanctioned play for both of these teams this week this uh, year. Now, in the Women's Flat Track Derby Association, where that numeric ranking of yours falls, is particularly important come tournament season. The top 40 teams are considered Division One and go to the four Division One playoffs. The next 20 teams go to the Division Two playoffs, and the uh, top three from each playoff tournament for Division I go to the championships and the top one, well, yeah, the top two from each Division II play for third and fourth and first and second in D2 at the championships, which will be in Minnesota this year. Hooray, Minnesota. Number 333 on the line, Miss Enigma, lead jammer for Cheyenne. She is 
up against number 566, Destroyer, for Durango. Missy up at the top of the pack, but she just gets nudged to the outfield. That was number 10, Shotgun Shaheen, with the hit. Destroyer now free and ready to score points. Missy Enigma playing dangerously with that inside line, keeps her skates in bounds, collects five, calls it off. Five nothing in that last jam brings our score now 181 to 128. 16 and a half minutes remaining in play time here in this game. Actually the longest lead jammer streak of the game so far for Cheyenne, five in a row. So Cheyenne really doing their best to lock it down. They have built their lead back up from 44 points three jams ago, back up to 53. Still not quite where they were at halftime. That's number 27, Her Majesty, for Cheyenne. And number 1013, Kilicha. This is now Kilicha's 12th turn with the star in the game, the most of any jammer. Her Majesty out there for the eighth time, picking up lead. Joseph Jose headed to the box for 30 seconds. Kilicha breaks the pack now. That's going to limit the damage Her Majesty can do. She looks to her bench for advice. Keep skating. Durango with a full penalty box. Blocker being sent back in. She will be asked to report to the box. We've got a clockwise block being called. And that's on 9-11, Ikarumba. Four points for Kil Ichia. And another four for Her Majesty. This time she does call it off. It's going to be an eight to four jam. 189 to 132, just past the halfway mark of our second and final period of this game, which happens to be the final period of play for today. Number 85, Tuberculosis, asked to report to the penalty box. She was in queue right now. Durango's penalty box, very full of blockers and has been for the last jam or so, overflowing. Play resumes. Number 566, Destroyer with the star for Durango, but it's number 311, Roll Pounds, who gets out first, lead jammer for the Cheyenne Capitals. Pushing at the front of the pack, Destroyer gets out. Four points collected by Roll Pounds. RP continuing to skate, calls it off. Score in that jam, 4-0, 193, 132, 14 minutes left in the game. Cheyenne having taken the win earlier today, they if, if they win this game, they will be undefeated and in a uh, good position to continue on to the bracket uh, after tomorrow's play. The first bracket game is what we call B3. It will be at 4 p.m. on track two tomorrow, Saturday May 9th, 2015. First jammer through already. MC Slam number 151 for Cheyenne, but not far behind is number 939, Bad Check Bohati. Bad Check Bohati about 30 feet behind the pack. Slam hits the pack, calls it off. Two points for the Capitals. Again, we do have a live updating schedule with scores, hmm. and uh, and when we start seeding into the bracket, you'll start to see our schedule for the bracket fill out. Uh, go to Facebook and like Mayday Mayhem on Facebook. Which the, you should do anyway. The actual like the, like em up page, not the event page, the hmm. like em up page. Mm -hmm. So like Mayday Mayhem on Facebook, and you will see a link to a Google document uh, about two or three posts down on the page, maybe a little further now that scores have been shared. And you can go on there and the Google Doc will update for you magically. Number 1013, Kilicha lead jammer for Durango. She is jamming against Missy from Cheyenne. So it took more than half of the period, but the Capitals have managed to build their lead back up to the place where it was at the beginning of the period. Miss Enigma out and ready to score. Kilicha forced to recycle. And she does call off the jam just in time and does net three points for the Durango derailers. 
An even 60-point differential now at the 12-minute mark remaining in the game. We've seen flashes of brilliance from Durango. They've been able to, to bring it back and then get it chipped away and then bring it back. So so what we're really needing from the Durango derailers right now is something much like the, uh, the famous uh, duo Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid <laughs> who hung out down in Durango and also had a movie filmed about them in Durango. Mm. We need kind of some one-two punches here, a couple of jammers to get up on the line and put some big jams up on the board. Destroyer is doing her best. She is out first lead jammer for the Durango derailers. Number 123, Hooked on Onyx, is the one starting off with a star for Cheyenne. She's removed the cap, looking for an opportunity to pass it, but instead she gets out and will re put the cap right back on. That was bad check Bohati that she glanced across as she broke free. Uh, four points, four destroyer. She's going to call off the jam. And we're back to a 56-point differential. Advantage Cheyenne. This is roughly where we were at the start of the period. You know, I'd, I'd really also like to see someone on skates jump off that bridge like on Butch Cassidy and the Sundance <laughs> Kid. Are you sure you want to see that? Uh, yes, I have actually myself jumped off that bridge. Oh. Official timeout being called, likely to sort the penalties. Clock is stopped at 10 minutes and 53 seconds remaining. Giving us time to thank all of the volunteers that are making the event this weekend possible. The, the only people we want to be bored in the building are, of course, the medical staff, but we are deeply grateful that they are here. And then all the skating and non-skating officials who track the points, track the penalties, and keep our skaters as safe as possible out there playing this full contact sport. And who travel, come from all over the world to be here. Indeed. Certainly. On the inside, lead a jammer, 911, Ike Karamba. She is jamming against Bob Dylan, who is skating with the uh, helmet cover in her hand, going for the handoff to pivot Vivian Lamb out, number 1112, apparently a favorite to hand off that star. Track cut being assessed to Hannah Smashchana. Hannah Smashchana actually relatively clean in this game, according to my unofficial eyeballs. Three to two on the jam is the final outcome as Ike Rumba calls it off with three points, two collected by Vivian Layam out. 197 to 142 is the total score, just past the 10 minute mark remaining. I have to say, I actually have been really impressed by Hannah Smith Shanna's performance earlier today and in this game. Uh, big blocker, big hits, and uh, very few times have I said her name headed to the penalty box. Uh, Smash Tana, of course, a recent graduate of the Slaughterhouse Derby Girls Butcher Babes. It has reached the point where we're seeing more and more of those junior skaters making it into the big leagues, as it were. Number 10, 13, Kilicha out and lead Her Majesty, though, putting on the pressure about 30 feet behind. Kilicha tapping her hips as she hits the pack, successfully collecting two points. Unanswered by the Capitals. 144, 197, nine minutes left in the game in our day here today. Thank you for joining us here on ColoradoSports.tv. I've had a lot of people tell me that you joined us today while you were at work. Hopefully um, not abusing your company's internet <laughs> policy while doing that. Uh, and also uh, folks joining us this evening uh, having a little uh, happy hour with some happy derby time. Our next two ga our days are on the weekend so you should be fully free and clear to Tune in to ColoradoSports.tv. Number 939, Badcheck Bohati pushed to the infield with the star for Durango. Roll pounds, number 311, out there pushing at the front of the pack, trying to pick up lead for the Capitals. She does. Number 57, Bisco Fever will head out to the box for that block to the out-of-bounds region. Meanwhile, number 939 back out and ready to score. That's Just bad check, Bohati. Barely behind RP. RP wants to get past the Durango blockers who are at the rear of the pack. So advantageous position for RP. She calls it off, but was not able to get her hips past any opponents. Great job by Cheyenne bursting to the front of the pack and going ahead and taking advantage or taking control of the pack speed and racing away. So a score-free jam. 
keeping the score at 197 to 144. Yeah, it's kind of like fat-free or sugar-free, but nothing at all like gluten-free. Exactly. Yes. 197, 144, 738 remaining. MC Slamma really trying to get through on the outside with the star for the Capitals. She does. Kalicha still fighting at the back of the pack. She makes a run for it up the middle, though. Clear to score. MC Slamma staying inbounds just barely. Kind of doing a little bit of a flamingo there as she broke out of the pack. Four points. Kilicha got away before MC Slamma was able to earn the jammer lap point on her. So that was four and out for the Cheyenne Capitals. But it does take Cheyenne into the two century territory 201 to 144 just over six and a half to go in the game and really from this point of view uh the the time to nickel and dime has stopped yes and i can't think of a rhyme <laughs> rhyme time you almost had it dime yeah but stopped that, that was the problem ah. <laughs> miss enigma number 333 out and lead jammer for the capitals uh, she is jamming against Destroyer. Destroyer breaks out. So what Durango has been able to do is prevent Cheyenne from running away with it, but they have not really been able to, to make up the score gap that existed at halftime. Four more points for Cheyenne. And so they've been holding steady, but holding steady is not going to be enough to win them the game. 205, 144, 546 remaining in the game. Remember, guys, bright and early tomorrow, 830 Mountain Time. Uh, we also, I'm going to plug this because I, I want to plug this. Uh, the AFTDA right now is partnering the Association of Flat Track Derby Announcers, partnering with Mayday Mayhem to provide feedback to our announcers via an online form. Check out the Association of Flat Track Derby Announcers on Facebook to find the link to that form. We would love to solicit your feedback, whether you are a derby person or not. Entirely coincidentally, you're listening to two of the uh, directors of the AFTDA. Yeah, we wouldn't know why that slipped in there. 939, bad check, Bahati sent to the penalty box as number 123, hooked on Onyx, your lead jammer for Cheyenne. Pack right now looking a bit depleted. We've got uh, one, two blockers. Er, sorry, one blocker for Cheyenne in the box and uh, one for Durango in the box as well. Hooked on Onyx, breaks free though, five points. That's a second five point power pass for Hooked on Onyx who calls it off to extend. Well, not quite able to extend the power play into the next jam as it looks like Badchek Bohati able to leave the penalty box just before the end of that jam. Nevertheless, 10 unanswered points, establishing the largest lead of the game so far for Cheyenne. They're really locking it down as we take into the four minute territory. I think we can expect some uh, positive rankings movement for the Cheyenne Capitals after this game. Number 27, Her Majesty on the line for the Capitals. She is jamming against number 10, 13, Kalicha, but she is going to the box for a blocking out of bounds penalty. So power play for Her Majesty, who capitalizes on it by picking up five points. So right now, picking up momentum, the Capitals starting to look like they'll run away with it. Her Majesty into the pack, makes some contact, currently sufficiently controlled that she's not picking up any back blocking penalties. And five Her points. Sorry. Five more points for Her Majesty picking up five more points and coming through her, her blocking line, of course, anchoring it in the back. Power play has ended for Cheyenne. We've got a forearm being assessed on number 911, Ikarumba. 
Kalicha still on her initial pass. And we're going to conclude that jam with five additional points for Her Majesty. Total of 15 on the jam, taking the Capitals to 230. So a pretty positive movement here for Cheyenne. They're, they're picking up momentum, which is the opposite of what Durango wants. Working off of a five lead call streak as well. We've got number 939, Bad Check Bohati, on the line for the ladies in white, and she's out lead jammer for Durango. And that is number 311, Roll Pounce for Cheyenne. Roll Pounce out of the pack and clear to score, but Bad Check Bohati is in position to score right now. One to beat, picks up all four points, calls it off. So Durango is not going to go down without a fight, bringing the score differential back down to 82 points, but those 82 points are not going to get made up in the next minute and 32 seconds. Also, Durango choosing to spend their last team timeout. So we will pause that clock for a minute. Durango still able to stop the clock one more time with her official review. Correct. So period clock adjusted to a minute and 31 seconds. So, you know, you could, you could spend your money, much like Durango has spent their timeouts, by clicking on that Donate button now. Again, I suggest that you donate $5 a day uh, for your viewing uh, greatness of all of these games. We have such a full schedule here at Mayday Mayhem. It's crazy the number of games that we play. There's a ton of them. <laughs> there is a ton. 14 Women's Slack Track Derby Association teams, three Men's Roller Derby Association teams who will play tomorrow, and then four Junior Roller Derby Association teams playing two games on Sunday. We've got action for you all the way. Our final game of the weekend starts at 2.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time on Sunday. Back to action on the track. Miss Enigma, number 333, on the line for the Capitals. She's out in front and lead jammer. Brad, what's her lead jam percentage? Miss Enigma has picked up lead in 67% of her jam. Six <laughs> for nine. Two thirds. It's number 1013, Kilicha, ready to score as well. Miss Enigma getting tipped out uh, by number 911, Ikarumba. That gives Kill Each a time to hop through the inside line, grab four points. Four now picked up by Miss Enigma, but already in the pack for additional points is Kill Icha. Another four points for Kill Icha as Miss Enigma heads into the pack. Uh, Durango now fighting for the top of the pack and the speed of the pack kind of accelerating. Of course, now we've got a jammer being knocked out. Kill Icha is not relenting. She just lapped Miss Enigma to pick up five points on that scoring pass. Cheyenne continuing to run it out. It, it appears that with 50 seconds on the jam clock, 19 on the period clock, uh, perhaps Cheyenne choosing to just run this down to zero right now, Brad. I think that entirely likely, Ms. C. On the outside, Miss Enigma is pushed out. Doesn't do anything to stop the, the flow of the game, just letting it Keep going. Period clock has now expired. And a low block called on the uh, Cheyenne block, or the Durango blocker, but as predicted with the period clock expired, Miss Enigma calling it off four more points per jammer. Total of 17 to eight. A win on the final jam for Durango, but a win on the game for the Cheyenne Capitals. Capitals now going 2-0 and oh this weekend. Uh, was this Durango's first game today, this weekend? That would surprise me. Durango number four in pool number one. They've played at 2.30. Oh, they did. Okay. Against number seven, the Muddy River Rollers, who are down from New Brunswick, Canada. Indeed. So uh, Durango... Uh, 
picking up the loss in this game. Capitals picking up the win. Uh, Capitals certainly now going to going to continue into tomorrow undefeated. Uh, great play here today. We uh, we do not have the close of the day just yet. Uh, as soon as the congratulations have gone through, we will have Wilhelm scream with an interview with one of the players, likely from Cheyenne. So we'll toss you over to uh, Wilhelm in just a couple moments here. In the meantime, for ColoradoSports.tv at the fifth annual May Day Mayhem Tournament, hosted by the Slaughterhouse Derby Girls, taking place in Loveland, Colorado, I'm Mark Bradford, also known as Brad Example. And my name is Ms. Communication. I am fair and slightly unbalanced. And we look forward to talking to you a lot more tomorrow. A full day's worth of two tracks here on ColoradoSports.tv. Please do find us on Facebook and like the appropriate pages, both for Mayday Mayhem and for ColoradoSports.tv to, to follow the action. Congratulations have taken place. So... Wilhelm Scream looking for his interviewee. He's, he's scanning the crowd looking for his interviewee. I feel like singing some Enchanted Evening right now. <laughs> I mean, not true love, but, you know, like... You may see a stranger across a crowded room. It is a crowded room. <laughs> it is a crowded room right now, Brad Example. Cannot deny that. All of these teams, uh, many of these teams have, have brought some merchandise to help defray their travel costs coming from as far as... We've got a lot of teams from the north because not only do we have a couple of teams down from Canada, we have the Rage City Roller Girls down from Anchorage, Alaska. We've got uh, Wilhelm Scream over at our interview table. With number They're interviewing number 24, Rockscar. Heard of her. Maybe I've heard of her somewhere. I think I've seen her in orange before, too. I think so. Yeah, perhaps. Strangely familiar. We're going to uh, toss it over to Wilhelm Scream. Thanks so much. And Wilhelm, take it away. This is Wilhelm Scream here at Mayday Mayhem 2015. I'm here with Rockscar from the Cheyenne Capitals. Take me back to the first half and that, that star pass that you guys completely stifled. How did you put that together? <laughs> we didn't really stifle it. We just, you know played the game, played the game that we were supposed to play. <laughs> so it looked stifled from my perspective because <laughs> you guys were, the star was passed and then very quickly the pivot went to the penalty box. It, was, it looked like it was almost an intentional strategy of you saw the, the cap come off and you all honed in and forced that penalty. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say we probably did that, but <laughs> it's more or less the training getting us there. <laughs> Fair. Speaking of training, uh, during the second half, up until about eight minutes to go, pretty much just holding serve. Was that kind of like a halftime strategy of just like maintain where we are? We know that our endurance is going to end up winning out in the end. Yes, yes. We have very good endurance. Our team has been working really hard on that. So, you know, if we can just keep on, keep the, the jams going if we're leaves, then we know we can run out the time and get to the end of the game. Excellent. And uh, the last question I have for you is uh, you guys were very effective on the power jam. Um, both when you were penalty killing and you had to kind of deal with it, and when you had the power jam, you were really able to just kind of pile on some points and extend that gap. Um, how much during practice do you practice power jam play? Um, we just actually started practicing it a lot more this year, but I have to give major, major props to our jammers. They are definitely the ones that get through those packs and power through without much help from us. So. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on your thank team's you. victory. Go and celebrate with your team. We're going to be you. right here all weekend on ColoradoSports.tv.